Hi, welcome to another episode of The Hot Seat. I'm your host, Jeff Cawley, along with today's guest, new arrival here at North County, but he's been here before, Coach Dan Johnson. We're going to get into a little bit about that as we go along, but Dan is the new varsity boys basketball coach. What else are you doing there at the high school, Dan? I'm doing some AEP, some credit recovery, and a couple got a couple of jump start students as well. So All right, so keep me pretty busy down there. Keep me pretty busy. Okay. Hey, let's jump right into the hot seat while we're here. You're being sponsored by Jimmy Palmer. Jimmy came up and and paid the $25 sponsorship fee because he wanted to see you in the hot seat. Nice, and nice. He provided a few of the questions, I have to say, as all well. Right, all right. Jimmy Remember, did a great job on the last one. He I, did, he I did was, a great job. That was entertaining. Um, remember, for only $25, you can sponsor a friend, family member, or co-worker to be on the hot seat. Uh, just contact us here at Unitech, and be sure and like and subscribe to our Unitech digital media channel. First question, who was the best coach you ever played for? Um, I probably have to go with uh, Kenny Ash, my high school coach. Uh, he was my high school coach my junior and senior year. And where uh, was that? That was at West County, West County High School. Okay. Um, Kenny was, uh, I had multiple, it could be an indictment on me. I had three different coaches in high school. I had a, uh, Steve Schofield as a freshman who was a good basketball coach. Uh, Sean Goodwin was my sophomore varsity coach, and then Kenny Ash was my okay. was my coach my junior and senior year. What was it about Coach Ash that you really enjoyed playing for him? Uh, just uh, relatability, you know. Um, and he was a guy that uh, I could, you know, I could kind of confide in some other sometimes off the court that kind of stuff. Uh, he was just a, a pretty much just a, the role model for Great. me. I, uh, Great. I, I I wanted to be like Kenny Ash, and you know, 20 years later, you know, here I am with a PE degree and coaching some basketball. Yeah, how about right? that? Yeah. Other than Coach uh, Ash, who's your favorite teacher in school and why? Um, oddly enough, is probably uh, Peggy Scandrit. Um, she was my uh, math teacher. Uh, her husband was a superintendent. Her husband for a while. was was Doctor Scandrit as well right. there at, at West County. And uh, math wasn't definitely wasn't my going in wasn't my favorite subject at all. Right. I didn't understand it. Probably didn't perform the best in it. But she made class fun. She had a funny way to read the. Uh, uh, the, the lunch schedule and all kinds of stuff. Uh, she's if you had, can make the lunch schedule sound like fun, oh yeah, you know yeah. that that's that's Jason Lowry type fun. Man. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, can read the lunch schedule and you're excited by it. Absolutely, so, she was uh, she was a great teacher. Good. I didn't argue with Jimmy, although I should have, on screen. I didn't agree with his top three basketball players of all time. What do you have? Who are your top um, three? And I forget what he said, uh, but I know our top one is the same. I'm, I'm Michael Jordan, number one. Uh, probably go Kobe, number two. And I'd probably go LeBron, number three. Uh, and I know I'm leaving out uh, my favorite player when I was younger, Magic Johnson. And I remember you saying that was your I think Magic's one. number one. Um, and, that, you know, that's that was hard to argue as well. You depends can throw on, all those guys in there and draw one out of a hat, you'd be okay. Depends on what you're looking for. Uh, but, you know. You didn't mention any big men. No centers, no Kareem, no Olajuwon. Uh, well, and obviously the, game, the game's kind of evolved. I think those guys would have been uh, would have been great, the guys we mentioned, in any kind of era. Sure. Uh, big man's kind of kind of a – specialty right now so uh, trust me I, I uh, I'm a big fan of the bigs I'm a big Shaq guy mm -hmm. you know uh, watching old uh, Will Chamberlain footage and all that kind of stuff I like the dominance so watch and the, the power. documentary on Chamberlain there's a documentary on I think on Netflix or something yeah it's phenomenal yeah, very good very uh, good Chamberlain I think was one of those guys he was the best at whatever he was doing yeah if you're playing chess he was the best chess player he's yeah. just whatever he did he tether was, ball yeah tether ball yeah. whatever he wanted to do um, what are some of the local restaurants you enjoy visiting um, well, locally, I guess uh, Hub's Pub is probably would probably be the go-to. Um, I did hit the uh, the Mexican restaurant over here in Bonterre. I can't come up with the well, name. Well, you got of La Pachanga and you got El Har Harito. I'm going to pronounce that wrong. The one over there, kind of on the outer road by the by where Subway and that. That's kind lots of stuff. La Pachanga. Yeah, La yeah, Pachanga. Good stuff that, there. That, uh, really good. We, my right. wife and I really. Uh, Really like Mexican. We're big chips and salsa fans, oh, yeah. and they had some really good chips and salsa and, and other nice stuff job as well. There. But, but Hub's Pub, you can't you can't go wrong. Favorite sports movie of all time? You can throw out a couple. No, you know what? I, I've probably got some sleepers. Uh, my favorite sports movie of all time would be Digstown. Digstown uh, boxing movie. boxing movie. Uh, that, Luke, uh, Luke, Luke Gossett Jr. Gossett Jr. Uh, James Wood. Mm -hmm. is, James Woods is the uh, is the manager or whatever. Yeah, it's got, a sleeper. Got a betting uh, aspect to it. It's a really cool movie. Um, Rocky one through four, you know, uh, are, are all pretty good. Uh, you know, the ones after that kind of kind of struggled a little bit. Um, you know, 
there's lots of good baseball movies out there. Uh, for the love of the game, Kevin Costner, I think, is a, a, a really good one, one as well. So, um, and there's just a, the natural, the natural Hoosiers. Um, you know, start you to say, what about uh, Glory Road? You seen Glory, Glory Road? Glory Road's a great movie great as well. Um, movie. You know, there's uh, there, there's a, there's been a lot of good basketball. There's been some bad basketball movies, but there's been a lot. Of, the, the new one with Adam Sandler uh, that came oh, that's on Netflix great. recently yes, was, was uh, pretty good. My, my kids and I. It? He's a that. scout. I, I forget the name. Yeah, of it. he's trying to get the the guy to go pro, and uh, I can't remember the name of it either. But it was it was good. yeah, it's very good. It's on, it's on Netflix with Adam Sandler. It's a new release. It's yep. easy to find. So yep. any viewer who wants to watch it. We both highly recommend. Yeah, it. yeah, Excellent. you won't you won't be wasting your time. Excellent move. Um, what are what is your most nervous thing that you have about this upcoming season as a coach? What what makes you the most nervous, and what makes you the most excited? Kind of a two part question. Uh, well, um, what makes you nervous every year, I think, as a coach, is at the start of the season. You know, you get to kind of you got your stuff that you want to do with your team when you come in. Uh, you get to go through some practices and all that kind of stuff, maybe for a couple of weeks. And then, you know, very first game comes out there, you put it out there, you sit there wondering, is you this going to work? Is this, is this going to work? What is, is this kid going to show up today like he has the last 20 right. days in practice? Right. And, and are the things that we're trying to do, because uh, you know there's going to be some adjustments. You know, you're going to get, we, we start the season this year with two tournaments, mm -hmm. which is not much break time. It's three games, a day off, three right. games, whatever. So six games in. You know, am I going to be making adjustments saying, well, boy, if we'd have been doing this, if I'd have had the, the foresight there, we, we, we probably would have won a game or two right. more. That's the, always the, the difficult part as a coach. Uh, come game time, you, you lose a lot of control. So what's the thing that you're most excited about? Um, well, a couple things. I'll give, uh, I'll give Coach Palmer a shout out. The dynamic with me and him coaching together, that's something new for me. This is my 17th year, um, and I've had some great assistant coaches, but – uh, never worked on staff with a coach who's also, you know, been a great head coach. Mm -hmm. uh, he'd been a head coach for seven, eight years, whatever it was, had some great success. So I'm really excited to get started at practice with him right? Um, and get this thing going. We're kind of envision this, or I do, that uh, we might kind of attack, uh, attack it like a, like a football program, mm -hmm. you know. I love the way he does the defense, you know. Right. I kind of see offense. Won't a, be a much more. zone. Uh, won't be a lot of zone when, when Jimmy's in charge of the of the defense, right? Uh, and, and you know, as a as a opposing coach, what they do defensively has been very difficult uh, to scout and to play against. So I'm excited about that, learn from that, and then put my own little spin on it, try to match uh, the offense with the defense. So that part uh, I'm real excited about, and obviously all the the talent and experience that we've got coming back this year. Sure, great answers. All right, get a little bit of a multiple choice here. I love multiple after choice. after. After a big win, you're kind of winding down. You're at home relaxing. Jamie Johnson, Willie Nelson. Well, I know you're a DAC guy, David Allen Coe. I would have to say I'd go probably Jamie Johnson. Okay. Um, and all, both those other guys are good as well. Um, but there's more, you know, I hear, probably hear more Jamie Johnson on Pandora. You know, mm -hmm. I've got a Jamie Johnson station and all that kind of stuff. Um, and he has kind of more songs for each um, you know, whatever kind of situation, whatever Different kind of phases mood, of life. whatever kind of mood, very, mood that you might be. Very in. Uh, uh, Springsteen type catalog. Yeah. Got a lot of different stuff. Yeah, in big okay. Jamie Johnson fan. Good, good answer there. Um, we talked about where you went to high school. Where'd you go to college, Dan? Well, so for my first two years, I went to Central Methodist. Back then, it was Central Methodist College. Now it's Central Methodist University. Um, transferred my junior year, spent the last two years at SEMO, mm -hmm. um, then did my student teaching, and, and my first, you didn't ask this, but my first uh, teaching and head coaching job was at Crystal City. Really? Uh, 2006. Yeah. Really? So, uh, yeah, I went to, went to Central Methodist and SEMO, graduated from SEMO, master's from Missouri Baptist. Now, when did you come back, when did you first start at North County? I, I, remember, I remember when you started. Yeah. You, you followed um, Bill Mark. Was, was it Bill that you yep. followed? Yep. So, so it, was, it was you and then Fred, Foster came after you. Yep, Foster okay. for one year and I think maybe Ben Tracy for a year too. Yeah, okay. And, uh, but, yeah, so uh, I spent one year at Crystal City. That was 2006, 2007, and then I was three years at North County, the okay. graduating classes, uh, 2008, 9, and 10. Great, great. Okay. What kind of car did you drive when you were in high school? Did you have a car? I did. Well, so my first vehicle uh, was a 96 uh, Chevy S10 mm -hmm. single cab. Uh, my dad and I are both five kinda, speed truck, five speed, oh, four yeah. cylinder. You okay. turn the air conditioner on and it bogs, bogs down. down to nothing. Deal. Yeah, but I uh, got great gas mileage. Gas was, 
98 cents a gallon, five bucks to get you, you know, right. for, wherever for you want to go. That was my first one. Um, I actually, my dad and I, we're, we're not big car guys like we work on them, but we really like cars and we trade a lot and that kind of stuff. So we got that one when I was, uh, before I turned 16. Then I hit a little growth spurt and grew from about 5'10 to 6'3. And all of a sudden, you know, yeah, the rain, the uh, S10 is not working. Wasn't well. a lot of room. Plus, they got to get the speakers behind the seat, right? And so uh, it, there wasn't a whole lot of room. So we went and traded it for a '94 Ford Probe GT. The Probe uh, was hot for a yeah, while. Yeah, and then that was for that was a couple of days. The Probe was the Ford to have. That's for a while. that's the one okay. that I that I rolled to college in. So that was, <laughs> that was pretty cool. What made you decide to become a teacher and a coach? You you mentioned the coach Ash there at West County. Was there was there uh, and your mom taught your mm -hmm. mom taught facts yeah. at both North County and West County. Yeah. Um, it, was there anything else that you just liked about the aspect of teaching and coaching? Well, both of those two were, were huge factors. Uh, my mom being a teacher, uh, she would drop me off at school on her way to. She dropped me off at West County on her way to, to North County uh, every day, and then she was big FCCLA sponsor. Sure. They had a huge following, and so. I spent a lot of time in a school just while I wasn't going to school, you know what I mean? And, and uh, the interaction she had with, with her uh, colleagues and with the students and all that kind of stuff was a big sports fan, obviously. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I, I didn't have a whole lot of other interests that, did, that weren't school related. Right. You know, my brothers were big hunting, fishing guys, car guys, could work on stuff, carpenter, could build all kinds of stuff. And, wasn't that, you? that really wasn't me. Sure. I was, you know, I was baseball, basketball, you know, what kind I was of the same activities way. we, we were getting in. So brother and I. Uh, when you look out there, you start talking to your, your counselors about what jobs fit your fit your interests and that kind of stuff. You know, school just fit right there. Then there, was, then there was Coach Ash, my mom, the whole deal. So that, that's, that's where we're at. So Jimmy, basketball question here. He said, you get a mulligan. You get one do-over in coaching. One thing, well, I did done that different. What's that one thing? Is it one game? Is it, it one thing? Is it? It's a it's a kind of a decision, but for me that's an easy one. Okay, I was at Hillsboro, and uh, we make it to the Christmas tournament championship, whatever year it was, sixteen or seventeen, um, and we lose to Farmington. Um, and that tournament, that game, when you get to, like I said, that was about ten games right. in. You get to start looking at stuff. We had a bunch of big guys, and I I, I didn't know at that time we could play them all at the same time. Just put all the big guys on the court, kind of one true guard out there, mm -hmm. and just be huge. Um, we made that shift after that game, went on a big run, beat Farmington in the district. The next year, world of difference. The next year, same game, beat them in the Christmas tournament again, and so would have been able to hoist one more gold ball had right. I been able to to figure that out before then. Okay. So that that would be my mulligan there. Who would play you in a movie about yourself, the Dan Johnson story? Um. I guess it had to be some tall, skinny guy with a bald head. I don't know. I, you know, my my favorite actor would probably be like a Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, uh, Marky Mark. But he's a lefty, so that might not work. Well, he's out. also about five ten and on he's the tall. He's not very day. tall, so uh, I don't know. Um, maybe a maybe a Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. How about is he an actor? Yeah, he's an yeah, actor, right? Yeah. You know, Channing yeah. Tatum. He's a. He's yeah, a, we'll give we'll give you. Yeah, he was in uh, Coach Carter. Yeah, bald headed, okay. hooping a little bit. All right. Um, Who's your favorite professional sports team? Um, that the Cardinals. Baseball um, I, Cardinals. Yeah, I'm not a huge like this is my team type right. of type of fan. I don't really have a a diehard football team to root for, college team or whatever. So, uh, right. But the Cardinals. Okay. You know, we we pay a little extra to to get the Bally Sports to watch all the Cardinals games. Okay. So go Good with Cardinals. Idea. Um, who's the best North County player that you coached when you were here before? Chuck Schwartz. Chuck Schwartz. Chuck Schwartz. Um, you know, and, and he's, I think, maybe third or fourth all-time now on a scoring list. He's, he's behind uh, Hayden and PJ, I uh -huh. think. Uh, so he's 1,400 and something trying to put all that together. But Chuck Schwartz, I took over for Bill Martin, and they were great the year before. They won the Christmas tournament, they, you know, 22, 23 games. And uh, Coach Martin said, you know, you've never seen anything like this guy. And I've only been coaching one year, but he's like, he can just score it. At will, he steps off the bus and he's already got twenty. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I saw him in the summertime and and he was he was putting it on her. But summer teams don't play much defense, you know, and all right. that. <clears throat> so we go to Marissa, Illinois, to the Turkey Day tournament or Turkey tournament or whatever. And first game, 
come out, we play Woodlawn or somebody like that, and we, we win. Chuck gets about 25 points. I've seen guys get 25. I got 25 myself before, right? The next game we play Marissa, Illinois, and Chuck Schwartz has 40 points through three quarters. And, you know, we're getting down a little bit, bad coaching move, and I, I throw him back out there to start the fourth, and he picks up his fourth foul like that and uh, doesn't get to play the rest of the game. So finished the game with 40 points, only played three quarters. Wow, that's and, impressive. Uh, and in a game that we actually lost. Like, we needed all those points. Right, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't against a bad team. So Chuck Schwartz for sure. Okay. I, I, I remember that uh, when you first started coaching, and I was you and I had a conversation, and I said, you know, it's, it's, it's great when you build those relationships with kids, you know, and, and I think you and I did that a lot through giving a kid a nickname or, you know, razzing a kid a little bit. Yeah. And I, I remember you had a player, and I'll, I'll never forget this, you had a player and his name was Stefan. And you said, uh, you said, Stefan, how do you spell that? And he spelled it for you and you said, yeah. You're Steven. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This you're, was before yeah. Stefan Marvin. Oh, yeah. Before all yeah, those guys. Yeah, before, yeah. No, you're from Montero. You're yeah. Steven. Yeah, you're okay. from Montero. That was the line. Yeah. You're from Montero. You're Steven. Yeah. I like yeah, that. Absolutely. Um, so, we talked about this a little bit off camera, and I stopped you because I wanted to talk about it on camera. Okay. So, I had... Uh, about 10 years ago, I used to take uh, some of my seniors skydiving. We used to take a plane up, and it was always a fun trip. And that was before everybody did the tandem jump. You had to learn to do it on yourself, do an accelerated free fall one year. Severely bruised my tailbone, broke my back. You're going up today to have some tailbone work done. And uh, Jimmy wanted me to ask you how that accident happened. Because for those that haven't had it, it's excruciatingly painful. Yeah, you're you're having a hard time sitting right now. I bet it, it's, usually it's getting up and down. Yeah, in the yeah. And you you got to find a, a spot and kind of stay yeah, there. Yeah, and don't it, move much. And it starts hurting other parts of your body. So well, is this something you can tell? Because when Jimmy asked me about it, I thought I might not even be able to ask. Well, this. Or you I'm, might not be able to answer. Probably it. just spare the details. But I, I happened to uh, I I clumsily fell um, and put basically all my weight. Couldn't catch myself. Uh, all my weight directly on my on my tailbone um was in a boat and uh you know it, whatever i'm not sure what happened to the seat it was turned around it wasn't there but you whatever, missed but the seat i missed the seat completely and in a haste to try to grab at something i missed there as well feet up in the air you know tailbone crash, all, all crash your way and okay. uh yeah that the next day it wasn't uh wasn't too bad you know two days later it was worse and uh it took me about a week and a half of trying to tough it out to, th to think, ah, maybe I better let yeah. let well, somebody else take a look at this. Somebody knows more about this than the, the x-ray didn't look very good. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it, it was, uh, yeah, and that's not one that just goes away very No, very, very no. It, it, so. um, uh, about a year. Uh, I yeah. suffered with it for about yeah, a year. Yeah, so. good. I'm, I'm about, I don't know, four months in. Yeah, now, so. well, you got a ways to go. you got a ways to go. Um, Best thing about coming back to North County, and what brought you back to North County? Well, it probably the answer to both questions is uh, is the people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've just got there's some great, great people in in positions like uh, you know sometimes sometimes people got people are just position fillers, and the people in these positions at North County are are actual you know awesome people. Right. Okay. Um, you know, and that that starts with. Uh, at starts at the top on down. Obviously, Coach Palmer, Jimmy had a had a big influence on it as well. His transition to administration kind of opened something up there. And uh, but a lot of the people are the same that I knew. A lot of them are, are newer people. And I'm right. talking all the way down to, you know, like our lunch ladies are awesome. You know, our custodians, especially at the high school. A lot of, a lot of them are the same that were here when I was there. Right. The place is always clean. They're just uh, friendly, it's awesome, good place to awesome work. people. It is good. You know, and that's that's the truth. Dan, what song would have to be on the soundtrack of your life? What song would have to be on the soundtrack of my life? Oh, that's a good one. Um, there's one, so I, I, I made a joke one time that my mom didn't think was very funny on the way to church. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 song, the song had a little, uh, I think it was maybe a Nugent song or whatever. Um, and uh, it, it has a curse word in it. Though. Yeah. Now you're messing with a, oh, yeah, with, yeah, with, I know with, the song. with an SOB Absolutely. or something right, like that. Right. So, uh, uh, that would be like like my funny one. Um, I think it's funny that you were listening to Ted Nugent on the way to church. Yeah, yeah, she. It, it was a whole deal. You know, I, was a, I, was, I was a youngster, so I didn't make that mistake twice. But uh, uh, I don't know. I, I'm. I really like. Uh, I'm a different. 
genre type. It's a mood type thing. Right, um, sure. I'd say at one point in my life would be, you know, be a lot of, a lot of Eminem, you mm -hmm. know, that kind of stuff. Uh, nowadays, it's more, you know, I'm, I'm a Morgan Wallen fan. You know, I, Morgan uh, Wallen. Jamie yeah. Johnson, that kind of stuff. Uh, okay. So different phases. So the soundtrack. Um, yeah. Variety of things. It'd, on it had it'd be a variety. Okay. Yeah, we, we'd have to have a burnt CD. We that. had this this conversation when you were here the first time years ago. I think it was uh, you and I were sitting around. I don't remember who else was in the room, but we were discussing who could eat the most hot wings, and um, you were pretty confident that you could, you could you could be the hot wing eating champ. <laughs> How many hot wings do you think that the most you ever eaten in one sitting? Uh, I had a gift card one time to. Uh, to a hot wing establishment, and it was for 50 hot wings. Uh huh. Um, and I want to say I made it through probably, probably 35 of those. Right. So that, that, that's. I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, the I drums could, you just one one yeah. swoop and they're gone. Yeah, and in, and in college, they, you know, Buffalo Wild Wings would have the you know 50 cent. Uh, mm -hmm. Drummy day or whatever. Yeah, you go in there you twenty dollars. Yeah, the time. yeah. You just go in there and just try to kill it. But I don't know. I, I couldn't do that much, that much anymore. I don't know what happens when you get older to your to your stomach and all right. that kind of stuff. But it gets bigger. But you can eat less. I don't know how that works. I like this question. Jimmy and I talked about this. Um, what's or Chad Mills and I actually talked about this. What what sports record? Do you look at that record, or is there a couple and say that record won't be broken? We're talking about pool holes coming up on 700. Right, right, right. You know, he's not going to get to uh, Aaron. He's not going to get to Bonds. He's probably not going to get to to Ruth, any of those numbers. But 700 is pretty impressive. You yeah. know, it's one of a handful of people. But are there some records you look at and say, yeah, that's, that record's any sport. Not well, uh, the the Cal Ripken Jr.'s um, record, you know, that Executive that longevity. Games played. Yeah, and I'm not sure what that is, but he passed uh, Lou Gehrig, wasn't mm -hmm. it? Was that right? Passed Gehrig. Um, you know, that, with the way, you know, Nowadays, and with maybe the new training or the new outlook on stuff, guys get scheduled days off and all that right. kind of stuff. And guys didn't used to used to take those days off. Um, you know, I, I don't know outside of that one. Um, the the newer the other new one with uh, with Wayno and uh, uh, Molina. Mm -hmm. You know, the consecutive games started together again I, because players <coughs> move around a little bit more yeah, than they yeah. used to. Those types of things. Uh, what about we talked about Chamberlain? Chamberlain scored 100 points. Yeah, I, you know, and you would think that's out of reach. I think they're going to add a four-pointer someday um, in the NBA. So then it becomes attainable. Uh, and then it becomes – Kobe got 81 at one point, um, you know, so he wasn't too far off. Uh, and, and as they changed the rules to, to make it more about scoring points and less about mm -hmm. defense and physicality, that, that one maybe, you know. Um, Another thing I noticed with Chamberlain, I read this, he led the league in assists one year. Yeah. As a center. Isn't that crazy? Led the league in assists. Now, he had the, better, the best view to pass from. <clears throat> oh, yeah, he could know. see uh, over everyone. But, yeah. Um, for, for me, I think it's uh, – I don't know that – I agree 100% on the Ripken. Uh, I don't think 5,714 strikeouts by Nolan Ryan, no one's going to get close no. to – they don't have the longevity. They right. can't stay healthy enough. They don't have that work ethic that he, he had. He had something like, what, seven or nine no-hitters Seven no-hitters. Yeah. You know, Crazy. it's another one probably not going to be matched. <laughs> right, right. Um, a, a lot of those. But when you – we could sit here and talk for an hour about those those mm -hmm. different records. Um, last question for you. You're a junior or senior thinking about coming to Unitech, knowing some of the programs we have up here. What do you think you would enjoy taking? Um – I think something like I alluded to earlier. I'm not really good at anything outside, you know. But something that would be useful now as a as a homeowner now, and what I'm hoping to be is going to be my third house. Um, it 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 would be very beneficial to know how to do some sort of uh, well, a little bit of everything, but some sort of carpenter, you construction, know, construct, electric, construction work, electrical stuff for sure. Um, you know, plumbing, any of that kind of stuff, uh, because there. You, you got the one guy in your little neighborhood or your subdivision that every time something happens, you, you got to call him. You got to call him, and then <laughs> then you got to try to figure out you know a time in between something happening and call him so he doesn't think you're just calling him when you need him type of thing or whatever. So <laughs> no, I'm, it's Dan Johnson. I'm, I'm Something's never that broken. Guy. Guys call me, you know, if they they need something moved, you know, just some sort of manual labor or or hey, we got a, a, a golf scramble, you know, and you're kind of you're not a good golfer, but you're fun to yeah, talk you're fun to, to hang out with. You drive the car, but yeah, but. Uh, I, I would say something in that field, um, and obviously, you know, as I, like I said, I like to trade cars a lot and, and that kind of stuff, and, and 
check out the car dealerships, and they're always looking for mechanics. I think uh -huh. right, right now, car mechanics, you could pick your spot. You could McKay. probably pick your salary. Jason McKay from Sam Sism just sent me a text earlier with a, with a young man's application said, should I hire this guy? And I went down to Automotive, and they said, absolutely, yeah. he's a good. So they're looking, all these guys are looking on a daily basis for yeah, good candidates. Yeah, and, and those guys can make some, make oh, some, make you're some make great good money. money. Yeah, for sure. Dan, uh, you done it. You were real nervous about coming on. You did a great job. Well, I appreciate you it. to say something. What else? Yeah, I got one, one more before we uh, let go here. Uh, so you, you talked about some of the stuff we talked about in the past, my last yes. time around. You had a line one time. Um, and I'm sure everybody's heard it or whatever, but I heard it the one time, and I've used it a lot over the last 15 years and, and kind of passed it can on. Can you say this? Passed it on as my own. I can. I can. So we're, <laughs> okay. we're in a, uh, a teacher meeting, PD meeting over mm -hmm. in the theater or whatever, and we, we're supposed to split up and go somewhere else with our groups. And we all come back, um, and your group is late. You know, we're waiting around, waiting around, where's your group? And Bart Mitchell happened to be in your group as well. That's why and, we were late. And and we come rolling in there and, uh, you know, sorry we're late. You know, Bart wouldn't wouldn't stop talking. You know, it, you you ask Bart what time it is, he tells you how to build a clock. You know? <laughs> I remember. And, I, and I'm like, oh, and I use, I've used that so many times. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, you know, appreciate it. the first part of that is Howard Noble originally said, he said one time he asked Bart to tell him a story and Bart started with Adam and Eve. <laughs> So that's, that's, <laughs> that's always a good, a good end too. of it, too. That's a good hey, one too. thanks for watching The Hot Seat. Been a very good guest here with Dan Johnson. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, you can sponsor a friend, family member, or just a co-worker for a mere $25. Send it up here to Unitech, and we're happy to have you. Thanks, and have a great day.